There's one magical, haunted evening each year when all the scary creatures come out to prowl through every neighborhood. But here's the scariest monster of all. Welcome to the Cemetery Gates Podcast, featuring Xandra King and Android Virus. computer wasn't working and I said well maybe if I do it like the guys in weird science did it <laughs> and put a bra on my head it might work and guess what it worked so well I'll be damned so I put a bra on my head good for you there you go <laughs> so <laughs> there it is there you have it it's a bra Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cemetery Gates Podcast, 2022 31 Days of Halloween Edition, Volume 1, or Episode 1. How do we do that? I don't know, I think we've done Volume 1, Part 1, Episode 1. This is just 2022. This is, yeah. Let's just go by the year. That's right. 2022 31 Days of Halloween, Cemetery Gates Podcast Challenge. And once again, this year, we're uh, joined by a uh, third party. How you doing, the magpie, monotone? Great. <laughs> the you. insomniac herself. I need the sleep. Do, well, you know, get some. I can't. Do so you know I, I think insomnia she, is. So <laughs> for a fun uh, side of uh, a fun little bonus thing, Mona is going to not sleep for 31 hours straight <laughs> before we record every show. Just to give us that little edge we need for 2022. Yes. yes. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. You're going to get give us that edge. So, um, as always this year, um, we're doing um, 31 movies we've never seen collectively, uh, other than Mr. Xander Kane. He's, he's, he's got his own little off-roading yeah, choice. Yeah, kind of. Well, mother- we, well, this mother- well, you guys gave your lists, and I had seen, like, 26 of yours and 25 <laughs> of Mona's. And I'm like, I'm not going to make you guys... Like, and you guys had a lot of cool shit in there. And I was like, no, I want to know. I want to hear you guys talk about some of the stuff. So I was like, oh. I, I can I can join in on the conversation on most of the stuff you guys are doing. And the ones that I hadn't seen we're going to do together anyway. So Perfect. it just kind of worked out. Well, I, I, I can't wait uh, to get deep dive into the first section of movies that uh, we, we collectively watched. And and listen to your sir um and um it's it's gonna be fun i I'm, I'm having some high hopes we've had this first first eight movies uh had some stinkers but we'll, we'll, we'll get into it but uh <laughs> let's uh let's let's get the ball rolling um maybe I'm i'll glad edit i some. watched the shitty ones first yes or so we, you hope so you hope we still got fucking <laughs> well, i mean this week anyway well, we still got two, three more weeks to go. You might have more shitty ones to watch. You never know. Yep, or hallucinate them. Yes. Did that really happen? Much like no sleep. Much like our first movie. Well, there's a lot of hallucinations in these movies that we watched, but um, I will say that a lot of hallucinations. Um, but number one, guys, our number one movie, not our number one movie, but the first movie of our 31 Days of Halloween Challenge, collectively. The Brain from 1985. And we all watched this, correct? I yes. just finished it. So what? We didn't say the theme. What? What's the Did theme? Did we all have themes? Nope. No. What? I have what? a theme. Mine was visceral. Oh, <laughs> okay. So that's this... what my whole list was about. All right. Well, hey, there you go. Did you pick this one or did I? I don't remember. I think I picked this I one. I did. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Visceral I don't having to do with the body. Disease, oh, decay, parasites, mutilation, mutations. Oh yeah. Okay, I got you. I because I don't remember who picked what. I just know that this is what we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm confused too. I didn't half-ass it either. I mean, meaning like I just 
I'm like, I didn't see this. I didn't see this. I didn't see this. So um, 1988's Brain Guys, it's a nice Canadian science fiction horror film. Um, and it kind of depicts a giant brain that terrorizes people. And it's a weird, it's a weird movie. So um, I like to think of it as like the brain is like Q from the QAnon crew. And this is what will happen if enough of them <laughs> successfully win their offices in Senate races. This is where we're headed, folks. Is that no. what you do? The independent thinkers. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, 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 I'll tell you. I got Cronenberg's vibes from this one. Oh, for sure. Um, um, which I really liked. Um, I got, yeah, that whole like hive mind mentality bullshit. Right. Um, and well, what else did I get funny from this one? Um, yeah, brainwashing. It was. It was just. Yeah, the brain. It was brainwashing, and he was brainwashing people. But it was... the psychiatrist was using this brain to through the TV to brainwash people. Yeah, kind of like Halloween three coming through the TV screens to get you. Except we'll... now he's coming at like four o'clock in the afternoon and talking to stay-at-home moms and telling them to kill their husbands for not watching the show with them. And doesn't and it get then... bigger every time there's a death? Yeah, yeah, the brain grows in strength. If you remember the very, very beginning, it's like in this kind of tiny, not a tiny tank, but it's significantly smaller at With the very spine. beginning of the film. Yeah. I I really particularly enjoyed the brain eating people. Uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. And I liked how he grew every time he ate somebody, like you said, and then, and then uh, it was just kind of this whole... Yeah, it was a nice science fiction. It was kind of a throwback to 50s type of paranoia. Like, I'm the only one who knows what's going on here and everybody else isn't in on it. Um, super violent, which is what I liked about it. it had some nice violent parts. Um, and, you know, you had the kid who knew it was too good for his own good. He was smart, but he at the same time, he was the hero. The prankster. Yes. He was a jerk at first. He was. He learned his lesson, I think. I like the I miss puppets. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the bleeding teddy bear and it, the brain reminded me of like ghoulies meets boglins. Is that what they're called? Those Goblins. toys from the eighties. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boglins. I think that's, that's correct. Because it, it like developed a face and cannibal teeth. So yeah, it was like a, a one of those like weird Freddy looking faces from like Dream Warriors too. It had that vibe. Um, and uh, I just thought it was really funny. Like, one of the funniest parts is the lady that fucking killed her husband with the chainsaw and was blaming right. it on him. Right. <laughs> he did it. How many times have you asked him to watch this show with you? Best line in the movie? Well, that's food for thought. <laughs> um, which is really, like, I was like, where the oh, it was the guy from, from um, the asshole from, uh, from uh, Reanimator. Yeah, and, the doc or the doctor. And he got beheaded in this movie too, which is really funny. Where he got his head pun <laughs> punched off in this one. So, um, yeah, not to talk about this one forever, guys. But number one, uh, the brain. Um, I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie, to be honest with you. Um, for me, it's a for for what it is, horror sci-fi, eighties Canadian, uh, direct to video, beautiful fucking cover art. Uh, I think it's a solid four out of five what about you guys i stuck it right at three and a half so i'm oh. not too far behind all right and i did like uh the 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 one scene in particular where he's in the diner and he's like kind of hallucinating that he's seeing the brain come in i thought that scene was pretty fucking cool it's yeah like everybody stared at him and the people they're like oh don't stop they're gonna take you away mm. oh <laughs> in the restaurant yeah that was yeah. great that was the best yeah, that was, part yeah it was a cool scene Right, but it was yeah, three and a half out of five. There you go. What, four. There you go. Bam. Yeah. Bam. So so high marks for the brain, the whole, all the way around. The whole crew. And uh, some of the the tongue stuff reminded me of like Deadly Spawn, with like because mm -hmm. it was so kind of gory and like these long like tentacly things that just kind of looked cool. So it's a lot of comparisons to uh, a lot of other great movies, and this one's a fun watch. It and is. Invaders from watch. Mars. It yes. Kind of reminded me of also. A lot of wonderful vibes to this one. Yes. All right. So our number two collected film for the month is... This is the, not going to be so fun. 
Yeah, it's an uplifting film. Uh, <laughs> our uplifting film uh, of of this uh, first batch of films, 2017's Gerald's Game, um, and uh, it's a Stephen King book. So uh, it is. Yes. So, what you got? A married couple who. It has you know, a Carla Gugino. Is that how you say her name? Yeah, something like I love that. Her. Yeah, Carla she's great. Gugino and yes. Bruce Bruce Greenwood, Captain Pike from Star Captain Trek Pike. remake. Um, he's it's also done some. 1992 book, and this movie was made in 2017. Yeah, a long he, time coming. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so. Tell us more about this movie, guys. Yeah, so it's a, a couple. They're basically going away on a trip. Um, you can kind of get the vibe that they're kind of, I don't know, going through some shit because they're heading down there to this like secluded place. And he like keeps trying to rub, rub on her thigh in the car. And she's like, hey, no, we're not going to fuck in the car. Get your hand off my thigh. And like in an effort to like appease her husband, essentially, she agrees to go away and like spark their sex life. Yeah, I feel uh, there's not a lot of fucking going on in their marriage. Yeah, no. Uh, like they had and shit, why? Shit, shit. He was so gross. He's such a, <laughs> he was just so. I thought he was your type. Stuck up. And... I thought he was your <laughs> type. He was, he was older and buff. He just wasn't hairy. wealthy. Yeah. I don't but know. Just... I'm old now, so the guys <laughs> I like aren't old. They're too old now. <laughs> <laughs> but he winds up like handcuffing her up to like the bed, but then he starts turning all kind of like into a weird rape fantasy. And Rapey. Yeah, and she's like, "Uh, fuck you, dude. No, we're not doing this." And since Ugh. he popped too many boner pills, he has a fucking heart attack, and she's stuck, <laughs> handcuffed to the bed. <laughs> and then she's going through like all of her, all the trauma of the relationship, and she goes to her uh, childhood memories where she sat in her dad's lap and he jerked off while she was sitting in her dad's lap when she was a little Elliot, girl, which was yeah, which was really fucking gross. Like, it's just like a, God, it's just like a fucking heavy, dark watch. Uh, well, she you know. started, like, hallucinating because Charlie right. yeah. horrible and gory happened involving a dog, a starving dog. Uh, yeah. So and he snapped. keeps going. It keeps the getting dog darker com- and darker. And yeah. the dog, the and dog comes. Creepy. Yeah, and the dog comes and is taking chunks off her husband. And he's trying to nibble on her feet, too, and... It's kind of her fault for feeding the dog, they alluded to, I think. It's not her fault. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it just keeps triggering, like Mona said, it triggers her PTSD, and you, you go through all the motions, and then she goes through, like, questioning that, you know, why did I, you know, maybe my husband who wasn't who I thought he was, and, then, you know, it's just a whole kind of, and the whole movie's an internal dialogue with herself. Um, and it goes to some pretty dark places and it kind of makes you feel dirty at least it made me feel dirty all the way around but I will say I think it's fucking incredibly well made because it does evoke those emotions from you at least for me you feel uncomfortable uh, when her husband's like doing his little weird rape thing you feel incredibly uncomfortable when she revisits her childhood trauma with her father uh, and the dog stuff like you just ah, you just like ah. I was I ready know. for this movie to be over Pissing me off. I loved it. I think my PTSD is helping. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, I loved it too. But I would never watch this again. <laughs> but I think it is a very powerful flick. I think I it shows. I want to read the book now. I I, was, I do remember a scene in the book. I believe the book starts off where he, I can't remember if it's Gerald's game or Rose Matter, but he actually, uh, like, beats the shit out of her and throws her down the steps. But I can't remember if that's Gerald's game or Rose Matter. No, I think that's Rose Matter. Is that Rose Matter? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, There's like those two books tie in together. There's like some hidden things from that. So, let let I mean, and in this movie, I mean, yeah, very visceral. It does get creepy. There's the 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 um, shadow man. The shadow man. The 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 man made of moonlight appears oh, to yeah. her. She falls asleep. But like she's talking. Her inner dialogue was her. Then her inner, and then her husband's like. I guess it's he's it's like her manifestation of her husband, her dead husband, talking down to her. Um, but you know, again, we bring up a more fati. You know, love your fate. What did she do? She remembered her gripping a glass when she was a little girl, and it cut her hand. 
And out of that right. ugly, nasty moment, something positive really came. Her escape. Love your fate. And, um, yeah, that was a pretty nasty scene. Yeah. For uh, sure. The degloving of the hand. That was, uh, that was rough. Yeah, um, it was better than the old break the hand thingy. Yeah, yeah, that was like, just use your blood as lube, as they say. Um, but, yeah, so... It, 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 uh, you know, I, I, you know, I thought it was gonna, you know, end like right, you know, getting out of the house and looking at the lake, but no, it continues. (laughs) (laughs) Um, she's an abused woman who prevailed and got her power uh, back and yes, through trauma. It's beautiful. (laughs) See, and so is she. She's beautiful. Yes, Yes. she is. Gosh, she is. She's, she's wonderfully beautiful. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, it. I, I would. I, I mean, this movie. I don't want to spoil a whole lot of. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns and ups and downs and and whatnot. Uh, but you know, it's. I highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know why I missed this one, but uh, it's okay. I don't mind being late to the party with a lot of movies. Um, Me neither. I just kept avoiding it. I'm just. Cause they just make so many shitty movies out of Stephen King. And... Right. Yeah. Well, this is directed by like Mike Flanagan. He's done the best and has become kind of Stephen King's go-to these days. So we should be we've got quite a few good adaptations now, at least very by Flanagan. So there you go. So what'd you guys give this one? Uh, four out of five for me. That was great. Me too. But, but I won't watch it again. <laughs> I'm going with a five. I'll watch it again and I'll recommend it. And I'm going to read the book. There you <laughs> Boom! Go. Congratulations. All right, so now into the next phase of the show where uh, the, the Magpie and myself picked uh, the same movies and Xander picked his own. Um, so we're going to start off with our first our first pick, uh, uh, Magpie. So what is it? What did, what, did you, what did we do? What's the first one? Hello. Are you there? Okay, did I'm you here. Drop off? Did you drop off? Yes, I did. Okay. Sorry, okay. I my headphones. Oops. That's okay. Um, so yeah, visceral. So I thought, what better way to start it off with the 1970s, The Wizard of Gore? Mm. It, was, <laughs> you know, Lewis. it was not rated, directed by Herschel Gordon Lewis, like you just said. Considered the Godfather of Gore. I'm not cool, so I've never seen nor heard. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, what, wait, wait, wait. Are you serious? Yeah. Interesting. And it was, huh. like, supposed to be the first movie that introduced the chainsaw into horror. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, basically, in this movie... Um, it's about a TV talk show host or and her like, boyfriend who investigate a magician, Montag the... Magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> he has, like, the ability to hypnotize and control the thoughts of people in order to, like stage i guess his gory illusions yeah like he pulls him up on stage he has several several deaths throughout these movies where he's either pulling women's uh brains out fucking stuffing swords in their mouth and guts. Then everybody... he's all playing guts. With guts yeah and it, what's really crazy is you get one of these movies where they had some real slaughtered lambs on ice on set so they could use the their brains and their guts so if they look real, it's because they are real. They're just not human. Um, and so Montag, he, he does these stage tricks. He he, he he does a chainsaw. He drills through a, a punch press. He And then, uh, you know, and then the crazy thing that happens is these, these women are showing up dead in the same fashion, but in another spot. So, like, the first chick that he disembowels, <laughs> she drops dead in the fucking, in a bar in front of everybody and, and with her guts hanging out. Like, well, how the fuck did that happen, you know? So, somehow, the way this guy is hypnotizing a whole group of people and then it's helping him get away with murder, so to speak, I guess you could say. Right. But but it it keeps going and going and going. And her and her man, who's, like, a detective, like are starting to catch on to the game, his game, but like nobody else's, but it's just like them two. 
and there's a lot of like weird like he has this like a lot of weird inner dialogue with those red scenes right Mona where he's like carrying bodies through fields and stuff yes. I don't know he's just like weird in his head but um like an so, acid trip so yeah <laughs> yeah and then and then she, she he she said um he agrees to appear on her show to perform a fire trick and he hypnotizes not only but everybody in the studio but everybody at home as well with the wave of his hand and he starts a fire and he uh he basically that was so fucking ridiculous yeah it was pretty funny and but the boyfriend or the cop pushes him in the fire and he's like ah all screaming and then oh he's so awful i know we think the magician (laughs) dies but the funny thing about it is is like so the chick Sherry and her her boyfriend Jack they're having it at home they're they're talking you know about what the fuck's going on and then all of a sudden Jack starts peeling his face away and it reveals that it's really Montag and he's like ha ah, tricks on you I'm not dead and then like in a weird way and then, oh then remember he puts his hands in her gut her stomach because he's pulling her guts out yeah because like, he hands. starts strangling her and then he like pulls her guts out. And then and then she kind of sits up and she's like, ha, ha, ha. Joke's on you. Joke's on you. I'm a better magician than you what you are. And he's like, what? You're a magician? You're yeah. a magician? He's like, what the fuck? Is this really happening? And you're going to have to start. And he goes, but I'm Montag and I, I'm the baddest motherfucker. And then like it, the movie circles back around to the very beginning of him standing on stage at the very beginning of the movie. And then they're, they're like, they look at him and they're like, oh, yeah, you suck. He's a phony. And then they just fucking leave and it ends. It's weird. <laughs> it was, str- oh my God, it was so fucking boring. Because it just had the same scenes over and over. This stupid white makeup face where he put white makeup over his eyebrows and his mustache. And it was yeah. so fucking annoying. I can stand him. Well, the guy who played him, Ray Sagar, he was actually uh, um, a production assistant on the movie. And two days into filming it, they had like an old dude who was supposed to play him. And the old dude realized like what movie he's like, what the fuck is this? And he walked off set and they're like, God damn it. And then he's like, oh, can you do it? And he's like, yeah. So he's like a 24 year old actor and they just put like fucking pancake makeup on him with fucking spray painted yeah it just yeah yeah, it was it was ridiculous yeah it was ridiculous but um yeah so I just um, did not like that character it was just so uh, like uh, like stupid uh, little uh, nerd uh, (laughs) yeah it was so yeah man I mean for what it was, Wizard of Gore, it did live up to the, a lot of the gore, but in all around, it was kind of a funny, weird, corny movie. Uh, there is a Crispin Glover remake from 07, I believe. I'll have to watch that one. I but, um, but uh, yeah, for this one, man, big swing and a miss. Two out of five for me. Yeah, I'm giving it a two out of five because two is for the gore, the chainsaw, and I stole some samples for my music from this movie. <laughs> I stole them. I'm going to rate this one too because I've seen it um, so I, I would go two and a half on this one I like a lot of Herschel Gordon Lewin's other stuff better like I like Gore Gore Girls and uh, the Dazzle Maniacs and hmm. Color Me Blood Red I think are all all more fun and entertaining than, than this one even though this one has the cooler name yeah <laughs> 10,000 Maniacs is great yeah. cool. alright your movie sir your uh, number three my number three is a flick called Soul Survivor from 1984. Uh, so this has like a, a woman that works for like a TV station. She's a news anchor and she's on a plane and the plane crashes and she's the only survivor. Uh, so this triggers like a, this is basically where Final Destination got their idea. So the rest of the movie, she's like going around her life and obviously she's distraught. She keeps seeing these ghosts of the people and they come after her and try to kill her so it's like this weird like they're not really zombies but they like come after her relentlessly and try to kill her over and over again 
there's usually like elaborate scenes where they come out and kind of scare the shit out of her. She's got this psychic best friend that's trying to like help guide her, um, you know, to figure out what the hell's going on. And it's uh, it's actually winds up being pretty dang fun. All in all, it does drag just a touch, and it does have a uh, a pretty cool scene at the end, as it with all the corpses and all that. You know, it kind of all comes together with all the dead bodies in her. Um, but it is super fun, super easy watch. Uh, I would highly recommend it. And what else is on there? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll just keep it brief on this one because, you know, there's not really a whole lot um, to say. No, no, it's just pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just like, you know, this is exactly where Final Destination got its stuff from. So. But in true, like, Final Destination fashion, you don't really want to talk too much about it because, like, yeah, you kind of give it all away, right? Yeah. And and I think this is a super fun, not so much talked about flick uh, from 1984. It's based off a book, I believe, um, but I can't find the author at this point in time. I read that somewhere. Uh, but, yeah, it was highly recommended by me. So Soul Survivor from 1984 gets a three and a half out of five for me. Very cool, man. Is that um, the, based off the Dean Coons book? Uh, no, it's <laughs> okay. no, it's. Uh, I can't remember. It's it might be Richard something. I have to figure it out. Not to be confused with Soul Surfer, the girl who lost her arm sh- surfing, right? Right, correct. Okay. <laughs> Just definitely, sure. definitely. It has like a wicked ass poster too, with this like skull and hands and like a. I don't know, like, uh, what's that shit? The air traffic control radar? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. That's a badass fucking poster, bro. Right? It's fucking awesome. That's fucking it's, dope as shit. It, it wants her. It's waiting. That's a it really cool poster, It won't be long now. <laughs> I'm sold yeah. just on the poster, sir. Yeah, super dope. Highly recommend it. Very cool. Um, and if you want to yeah. watch it, I can tell you where... It's streaming on Amazon, I believe. Yeah, but it is. I'll it's double check. Dope. It yeah, is, yeah. and and uh, you know, if it's where it's you on get Shutter the, now too. You get the idea where you know Final Destination got its idea from. You know, that's really cool. Uh, yeah. I I caught some shit online the other day because I said Popcorn the movie was better than Scream. It is. <laughs> and they're like, what? I heads exploded. So it was just like a tea kettle going off. You're good at that. What talking about talking about Scream and making people's heads explode. Well, you know, if, if people just weren't so obsessed with the movie and simped over it, you know, I don't know what to say about that. But, um, all right, what's our number four? Isn't it you next? Is it, is it me next? No, you pick. Go for it. Shoot your load. Um, You're going to pick them all. I mean, well, you know what I mean. No, I'm not. Warning sign I'll do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, five. Directed by Hal Barwood. Did yeah. stuff like Dragon Slayer, Corvette Summer in the 70s. Yeah. Did something for Jaws, I guess, was a writer. Yeah. For video game plots like Indiana Jones and Star Wars. Um, this movie stars a very young Sam Waterson from Law and & Order. And yeah. Kathleen Kathleen Quitlin. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and Jeffrey DeMunn, the young, like, he's... Uh, Dale from Dale Walking from Dead. Walking Dead. Yeah, Jacob. Ben Cotto. Oh, forgot that fucking Dale that was in it. Bailey guy from Police Academy. Yeah, yeah. Richard uh, Richard Dysart. He's the uh, got his arms chewed off by the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's st- a stacked cast. This film was, um, and uh, basically, it kind of follows. They're doing a secret. It's a secret uh, military uh, bio lab. Yeah, like a secret laboratory bio lab, and there's a they're they're, they're supposed to be a pesticide pe- pesticide manufacturer, and uh, basically it's one of the sealed tubes is broken. Well, and... it starts off they're already being stupid. They're like uh, mixing labels, unknowingly dropping vials, taking <laughs> pictures with their mask off, and yeah. Fucking taking selfies in 1985. <laughs> like what the fuck? What are you guys doing? Yeah, and like somebody steps on the thing, the the, like, the vial. Like bio weapons, and they're just like da 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 da. It's yeah. like the least safest place with the most toxic things around. Yes. Right. <laughs> and then it's and like then, if you uh, put a, a, a 
a uh, highly toxic lab in a fucking McDonald's playroom. It's basically what's going on in this room. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then uh, the the chick, uh, she's she, she's a security officer, and she activates their their little protocol, safety protocol, and seals all the workers inside from the outside world because she knows what's up. But these other doctors really don't know what they they think it's all bullshit. A lot of people they're like, man, One something group fucked does. up. Another yeah, block itself in. And... Yeah, and oh, by the way, it has Rick Rosovich in this who's uh, killed by the Terminator in Terminator 1, and he was in Top Gun. So it's good to see this guy in another movie besides those movies. Um, yeah, so basically a U.S. government team gets called in. Yafet Koto plays like the perfect fucking, you know, I don't know, spook from the government, right? This mirrored glasses. And um, the and it so happens to be that the, the sheriff... His wife is the security officer, and she's trapped inside. Right? Hello? Yes, right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's it's your typical quarantine movie. Um, kind of. Typical. Well, they start not trusting each other, and there's... Yeah, but then the people who start... Like who are this is where it gets cool. This is where it gets by this cool. bacteria they like come back to life, kind of like zombies, I guess. It kind of reminded me maybe of like where Twenty Eight Days Later got its idea because they're kind of like they're not really enraged, but they are pissed off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they they're just, um... like yeah, they come back to life and they're they look pretty gross. They're crazy and. They have, like, boils, and they're killing people. Yeah, they're not cool. They're dicks. And, and they we, look fucking gross. Right, and we find out that it's, like, it's not, it's a bioweapon. It's, 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 it's a weapon to cause that. It's not, like, a, it's, it's not, yeah, it's weird. Um but and the husband goes to check down the another scientist that used to work there that has the what is it the vaccine or what is it called yeah that's what it was <clears> the <throat> vaccine or I guess the, antidote. the yeah, antidote yeah there you go that's what they, yeah that's what it was and i yeah. guess he quit because he knew what it was the bioweapon that was dale wasn't it or, yeah that was dale i believe and then, uh, yeah, they they do that, and then the wife isn't getting sick though, which is strange. And they figure out, and this is kind of dumb. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't? And she didn't get sick because she's pregnant. That's Super kind of baby. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I don't know. I thought that was kind of a fucking. After easy... all, everything in that movie, that was the weird thing to you. Yeah, that was an easy out. <laughs> like that yeah. was an easy out. Like, come on, like what the fuck? But um yeah, so they they somehow get into the the place. They make an antidote and they're fucking the the sheriff and the other scientists and they're they're making their antidotes and they're stabbing people and fucking shooting people up with fucking all their fucking stuff that they made and um I don't know. It it's it's pretty cool, I guess. I don't I don't want to give a whole lot away about this movie, but I don't know why this wasn't bigger, to be honest with you. Like I never heard of this before. Like I, I I guess it was pretty big on cable back in the day and then yeah, it, was, it, was, it did get a release from um Screen Factory. Did it? A of, yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. Ago. And it's not it, there's nothing that like it, it it's a pretty cool movie. I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot to unwrap. There's a lot of story in this movie. Yeah, a I lot remember of fucking story. I remember it being not great, but not bad. I was like, yeah, yeah. It's it's your typical like those outbreak movies. You know, uh, you know. It's I don't know. Made for TV ish, but gory it, and more violent. <laughs> yeah, it was me, and, and and you know the actors weren't like they were they weren't B movie actors, but they weren't quite A listers either. Do you know what I mean? Like they weren't television actors. Yeah, yeah, they're and they're good. The actors were good. 
the the gore was decent. I thought in all in all, I mean, it was a it was a it was a little I don't know. It's like something my parents would have watched. That I, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what I feel like. It wasn't like a cool. Oh, my parents watch cool shit. So. <laughs> well, you know, my parents. I don't know. Um. Yeah. Uh, that introduced me to the thing. That was the first horror movie I ever saw. Yes. So I like the end though, where he they go back to his house and buy some for zucchini pancakes and gen, gene, a gen, genetically grown corn in the cob. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. It was okay. I, I, it, it was really middle of the road for me. Uh, three out of five. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I'll go maybe two and a half. All right, cool. All right, what about you, Mr. Xander? Uh, I'd, I'd probably like two and a half on that one, I think is what I rated it on Letterboxd. All right. Very cool. All right. What's your uh, yeah. What's your next one? Boom. Next one for me. Uh, miraculously, I hadn't seen Candyman twenty twenty one, so I decided to watch that. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I like the uh, uh, the guy, uh, the artist guy that you know, making all the art and all that shit. So it's you know it's the same story or it's roughly the same story as the original, but just kind of a little bit of an updated version. Uh, the, the biggest thing I didn't like was CGI bees. I thought that was silly um, when they had a bunch of them, but it was cool with, with the bees showing up like from time to time, kind of like it does in the original when when shit's going down. Um, I liked how his uh, I liked the ending with the wife in the cop car. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. Um, spoiler alert <laughs> it doesn't end well uh, but you know all in all a lot of people bitch about this movie but I thought it was perfectly fine I thought it was uh, I liked him I liked him as a lead I liked you know I liked the, the art the direction of it from Nia DaCosta I thought it was done pretty well uh, not life changing but I think it's worthy of being in the uh, in the world of Candyman I didn't I didn't feel like it was hurting because there was no Tony Todd, so which I thought I would like real at that, but no, didn't really bother me all that much. So I enjoyed it. Three and a half out of five for me for Candyman twenty twenty one. Was there any hooks in the butt? Uh, yeah, only four or five. Oh, okay, good, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna watch it then. Yeah, yeah. hooks in the butt. <laughs> um, four to be hook. Yeah. Um, all right. Also, there's a, this has a really cool fucking art piece at our art show too, which you know it's just like the mirror, mm -hmm. and then you open the mirror, and then it's like this super like crazy visual scene inside a whole other fucking room. It's pretty rad. So I'd like the art too, and the Very music's cool. good. Very cool. Well, um, our number five pick. I'll uh, I'll I'll go with uh, ours next, um, and I am going to go with. Uh, was it 1970 or 69? What which one was it? I forget. Oh no, was it Simon? No. King of the Witches. Count Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. Which Count Dracula? 1970s, brother. Oh, That's looks right. Like Mexican Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's With Mexican. Christopher children. Lee. Yeah. That's right. It was. Yes, uh, Franco. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was, it was a. Uh, um. Very true to the book. Very true to the book. It was a just. It was a. It was. This was. Okay. This. It. It's not a Hammer production like other Dracula films, which is Christopher Lee, again as Dracula, like he's well, done he before. Well, he quit playing b vampires before this one because he didn't want to be typecast anymore. Yeah. Right. But he did this one because it was true to the Bram Stoker novel. Right. Thanks to my friend Alex Lucero who told me that. <laughs> oh well, thank you, Alex. We appreciate that. We appreciate that, Alex. Um, yeah, this movie also has uh, uh, Klaus Kinski in it, which is you know really he Klaus Kinski uh, plays uh, Renfield brilliantly, in my opinion. Um, but you know, you have your 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 everybody, your Lucy Western Western. Uh, your Mina, Jonathan Harker, Van Helsing, Count Dracula, everybody, all your cast of characters in this. Uh, but it's more, I would say, it's more like like you said, it's it's a little bit different than than most. I find, for me personally, especially this 
in this time period English films really fucking boring like we've me and Xander have talked about it on the podcast like I have a hard time keeping in tune with them because there's just a lot of dialogue and but enough with the bad of this movie I thought the um I I liked the set pieces I liked the the spookiness of the the, the fog and the castles and um <laughs> well we did we did say uh uh, did I did send you a message and I said, what do you think of your Cholo Dracula? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah, you're like, quick, get out of my head, fucker. <laughs> you know, uh, like, and then, uh, and then you're all the wolves. They were like these fucking... I saw it when he, when his, when he gets blood and his hair turns from white to black. Yeah. Like, oh no, I let Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your hair net, bro? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I I like the way those wolves sounded at the beginning though. Oh I'd my love gosh. to sample that. The wolves, but they were just German shepherds hanging out. <laughs> yeah, but the sound though, you know, the beginning. Um, but you, there's not a whole lot to unwrap here. It's a Dracula film, and it's Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> so we're... I like the way Lucy looked in this one too. Yeah. Um, be smart with her little pointy teeth. And then I liked how um, when they were stabbing, was it Mina in her in her at the end? She's like, ah. She didn't do anything to defend herself when Renfro ah. was choked. Ah. 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 She was she was waiting for the O. Yeah, <laughs> like it seriously sounded like she was getting fucked, like softly or <laughs> fakely, or fakely, right? It sounded like maybe she's getting fucked. That's what fakely. vampire movies are about, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um. Look, I mean, again, not to un- unwrap here, got a lot, not to un- uh, not a lot to unwrap here, guys. It's um, it's Dracula, it's Bram Stoker's Dracula, just another version of it, really. Um, and we get a mustache of Christopher Lee. This is not a Hammer film, just Franco film. Um, again, thought the atmosphere was great, a little boring for me, just because I don't really particularly care for. 60s, 70s English films. Um, but uh, he died was very ridiculous and sad. Yes, yeah. The way he was. <clears throat> yeah, it was. You liked how he died? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, cons- it was cool, I guess. The way he was yeah. changing. Yeah. And the it fire. Was, yeah. No one knows about Dracula already, so. Yeah, you know, but yeah, I mean. For what it is, I mean, this is one of my picks. I like to try to do as many weird monster Dracula werewolf movies as I can during Halloween. Um, a little bit of a traditionalist that way. Two out of five on this one for me as well. Just found it a little boring, but there yeah, you have it. Cool. Yeah, there you have it. All right, you're next, Mr. Xander. Boom, I'm going to run off the coattails of that and talk about The Brides of Dracula from 1960. Yo. Boom! Yeah. Uh, also has uh, Peter Cushing, but but no Christopher Lee. Um, the premise on this is like there's a uh, a lady's coming to a town to become a teacher at this school for girls, I believe, or school for ladies. And she goes there, and she gets kind of tr- she finds a man in like some shackles, and he basically sweet talks her into like breaking her out. But once he does that, then the undead, you know. The vampires come back out and uh, wreak havoc on the town um, and then Van Helsing shows up like 30 minutes in the movies to help save the day <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but it's it, you know it's that t- it's what you just talked about it's that typical kind of like hammer pacing so it's all slow dialogue heavy uh, but this one I, it finishes really solid to me I love the uh, the teeth on a lot of the, the brides are, are fucking great they're creepy you get a lot of great performances out of the girls uh, on this one for the brides that were really great some really creepy scenes that i really liked and you know peter cushing's not really in it all that long but i thought it was great a lot of people do not like this prize of dracula i thought it was highly entertaining and a damn good time and i will leave it at that that thing's a three and a half out of five for me there you go sir all right bam um... speed boom done not that it's about speed but like you know it's just you know it's another dracula film (laughs) yeah yeah. yeah. Was it was this the blonde Drac was there a blonde Dracula in this one? I forgot. Uh no, it's just the bride. Oh, just the the women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
There's a blonde Are, Dracula there. There, there is a blonde Dracula. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, played there's... by Klaus Kinski, Vampire in Venice. No, wait. <laughs> there's another one. There's a, there's a, there's another Hammer film. He's technically it. not. He's not Dracula in that one. He's just a vampire. But how, how funny is that? <laughs> that Klaus doesn't Kinski count. Played Van Helsing and then played a vampire. Yeah, there is a Dracula. I forget, like um, the one with Dan Curtis. Ah, the fuck is it, man? Because I know I we little blonde Dracula. We watched it last year. I know we watched it last year. Oh. Um. Oh, I don't I know. I I'll have to. I'll have to. Oh, uh, the Brides of Dracula. It's not Dracula. Oh, was it the Brides of Dracula? Maybe. No. I don't know. I'll find it. <laughs> I'll find it. Uh, what's our next pick? Um, is it Ishi the Killer? Ishi sure. the Killer. Ishi. Sure. Very, very, very visceral. <laughs> you think? Directed Wait, which one did you? We'll say which one did you guys watch? You... Takashi, is that how you say his name? Yeah. Takashi Miike. Takashi Miike. Based off the manga of the same name by who? How do you say it? Hideo Yama Yamato? I don't know. <laughs> you have I... it in front of you. No, I don't. Oh. I guess it's... Well, do you know about this guy? This guy directs a lot of movies like this, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's Takashi oh, But he Takashi also Mike? does shows for children, which is fucking yeah. crazy. He does, like, <laughs> spaghetti westerns and all kinds of shit. Yeah, because this movie's about a sadomasochist Yakuza enforcer who hunts down a, what is like, a repressed psychotic hitman <laughs> who killed his boss and the boss's girlfriend, apparently. Did but, he? But did he? But he's not really, like, looking out for revenge. He's just sad because... He liked the way his boss abused him, so he goes searching for the killer, the hitman. Yeah. So that he can get, like, abused by him, because he's a sadomasochist. And his face, that was fucking cool. <laughs> I, liked, I liked how, like, in the beginning he was jerking off watching his boss. <laughs> like it was Oh, weird. that was very, very visceral that wasn't the boss he was just peeping on a pimp and a hooker oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he comes on the plant and it's very very i don't know <laughs> so gross <laughs> this movie was i don't know very rapey very gory it is very rapey. <laughs> everybody fucking sucks in this movie you don't feel good after it <laughs> no i had to fast forward one part where the girl which part where the girl wants to be raped. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you find out, because he's, like, all psychotic, because he thinks, like, he was bullied when he was younger, and the girl who tried to help him was raped, but that's not really true. He's just some old yeah, guy. Yeah, there's, like, implanted thoughts, suggested thoughts. Yeah, so that, that old guy, who's the old guy to him, could, like, manipulate him into killing for him. That was another boss, wasn't it? But who was he to him? Just I thought he was just another gang leader or something. No, he like raised him or something. Oh. I don't know. There was so much going on in this movie and it was really long. There's so a lot fast forward on. parts of it, so one part. I <laughs> saw all the other rapes and hooker beatings. Yeah. I yeah. made it. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of, I like the I like the razor shoe. A lot of a lot of cutting off of legs. A face? Uh, they cut off a face? Oh, yeah, it slid down the wall. That was really Yes! Funny. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Lots was of really torture. Cool. That, okay, so particularly the dude hung up on hooks. That was rough. That was a rough the, one. The, I was like, oh, I know what he's going to do now. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, there was Rose when he was licking the blood-soaked dollars. Yeah. Count your money, man. There's yeah. maybe like one ridiculous CGI scene, which I was all oh, the kind of grateful for because there's a lot of gore in here, and I was like, all right. Oh, when he cut the guy, got a break. 
cut the, the guy in half. Yeah. yeah, and then it's just fucked up because he saves the girl and he's all, now I'm going to be your rapist. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck? Get the fuck off me. Yeah. Just like, um, what? Yeah, it's, it, it's a trip. It's like, there's a lot of weird hallucinations and... And then he doesn't want to hear the dude cry at the end. He puts the needles in his ears. That was weird. Yeah, that's wow. Well, that one makes me cringe, actually. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of like, Ooh. yeah, that was the cringiest part for yeah. me because yeah. I've accidentally like jabbed hurt your ear my with tip. <laughs> yeah, and that was the most painful thing ever. So yeah, like, there's like, ah. there's like, there's like two things that'll always get me, and it's like that ear trauma, like that, mm-hmm. like internal ear trauma, and like fucking like. Forcing people to eat till they puke, that fucking kills me. Oh, <laughs> oh my that's god. My fa- that's my favorite thing to do. Oh, you um, love slaughter vomit dolls then, huh? Yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, how to unwrap this movie. There's so much going on in this movie, and it's a really long movie. I had to watch it in chunks and sections. Me too, all through so, the day. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, well, it's kind of hard to process, honestly, of one sitting. You're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> it, it may it be will... better served to watch that one in pieces. And, I mean, I could see why it's a manga, you know what I mean? Like, it's it, there is a lot to unwrap here, and again... It's a little convoluted for me. There's so much weird shit going on in it. Like I'm just like, wow. I also think there's some little. Yeah, I think there's just a little bit lost in translation. Translation on some of that stuff. I'll Um, agree with you there. Yeah. Um, But it's considered a classic. Like many people fucking love this movie. I I liked it. I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. Um, I actually gave it a four out of five for. But you know, I I thought it was cool. It's three and a half out of five for me. I, I still enjoy it, but it's another one that I won't go back and watch very often. So, I'll give it a three because the way the guy looked, what's his name, the sadomasochist with his slits and his oh yeah, face on the side. Who is not Ichi guys, by the way? Just let you know, no. a lot of people think that's him. You know, that's not yeah. Ichi. I'll never watch this movie again. It was just <laughs> too, much. too much. It was too, like what? I don't want to. Too much. Too, Beating cookers and rape and too buku as they say in I was Full Metal like, Jacket. Oh, this is enough already. <laughs> All right, what's up for you next, Mister Xander Kane? Up next for me is the 2022 highly anticipated release of My Best Friend's Exorcism, which is based off a very successful book that a lot of people love that I never read. Oh, I've <laughs> seen that on Prime. Yeah, yeah, it's an Amazon Prime original. So this takes place in the 80s, and it's about two best friends that have been friends, like, forever. And they go, they go out to this, like, uh, to this, like, party or weekend thing or whatever, and they go into this house, and obviously one of them winds up getting possessed. Uh, they go into the house, weird shit, like, starts happening. There's a cool scene with, like, a, it's like a tree or some shit growing in the corner. And they walk towards it, and like an eye pops up in the middle of it, middle of it, and they like freak the fuck out and and split. And the one girl leaves, leaving the other one behind. She gets possessed. The other girl is fine. The one girl wandering around in the woods. They have to go back to the house to get the other girl. They find her, uh, but she's obviously not quite right. Um, they go back to school, and then the the friend that was that we know of being possessed is possessed and starts being mean to everybody uh even Ooh, her friends and like possessed. distinct distancing herself from them and there's a really fucking hilarious subplot to this that i love and i don't know if you guys will even know what i'm talking about but there was a fucking in the 80s and 90s there was a, a group of muscle-bound dudes called the power team and yeah they were this like super christian group of men that would go and Ew. ripped phone books in half and show their physical strength via power of God um, you know on how God's will makes them like so strong this and that and they have like this thing that, that is literally just kind of mocking that whole group so this girl finds this guy that's basically a part of what I don't remember what it's called in the movie but he's one of the power team guys and she asked him about about her, her friend and he's like oh she's fucking exorcism she's exor- or she's uh, she's possessed and so somehow he winds up doing the exorcism but fucking bails mid exorcism because he's in over his head <laughs> um, but the movie has great effects it does have some funny parts 
it just takes like they spend so much time building it up like the first hour a little over an hour movie is just getting to like some action and then when you get to that third act it is just rushed through uh, but it did have cool music I liked the cast like but the jokes don't really hit as heavy as you want them to to make it a really great like horror comedy and like the exorcism part really doesn't come strong till the very end so it's just kind of a it's okay I don't think it's uh, the worst thing in the world but apparently compared to the book everybody's pretty pissed about it so I gave it a two and a half out of five which I think I'm looking at my letterbox right now and of all my friends that have watched it there's eight of us I gave it the highest rating in two and a half so <laughs> yeah I've never I've never seen it or heard of it yeah so proceed with caution it's not great yeah I keep seeing it around on yeah. Amazon so um up next on our list, uh, our number seven. Uh, nah, I'm saving the best for last. Uh, we're doing Octoman. That's right. 1970 Octoman. Uh, and it's a 1970 creature feature. Uh, it's funny because it's listed as a, like, a Mexican horror movie. Because I guess we have fake Mexicans in it, right, Mona? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that are always um, whistling stereotypical Mexican songs. <laughs> like what? Yeah. yeah, there's even like a really All okay. So like obviously painted darker. Yeah, they're like these 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 poor people. They're they're not these primitive people. There is a line in there. He's like these primitive people. They don't know as much as we do. Uh, I was like, I don't know any Mexicans that sound like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's the Mexicans in it. <laughs> oh, I know. They're all, sir, sir. Excuse you know. me, sir. Excuse <laughs> me, sir. My name is Davido. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically, there's some scientists. They're in Mexico. They're looking at some radioactive material there that's in water, and they discover like little octopus that have like a human mutation, and they take it back to the lab that and was a funny little thing i know a little cute guys so um yeah it it i don't know it's it's your typical creature feature i guess I right it was gonna be it was exactly the way it looked <laughs> yes. yes yeah it's 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 a it's a it's a funny one so they took um, the little one so a big one comes of course all angry searching Searching for the fucking, yeah, looking looking for its baby, I guess. Is that what guy and an, with the <clears throat> octopus suit and a big octopus head flailing around his arm. <laughs> <laughs> I he barely love... slaps you and you have a fucking hole in your head. Yeah, it was really funny. Um, it was. Yeah, I liked all that, but yeah, he 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 likes to at attack a lot of people. This movie. And of course he, goes he and, wants the female. Yes. Like he all wants these creatures. He wants her and he takes her and she finds a way to communicate with him too, right? Yes. Which is really good. But and I they like each of her. What did they say? A woman belongs in the kitchen. Yeah. You shouldn't belong out here. But yeah, the, what they do is they, they try to sell off one of the small mutant octopuses, because uh, they want to have it at a circus. <laughs> that was really funny. Of course um, they do. Yeah, of course they do. Um, but yeah, they 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 the uh, they try to lure the Octoman out, and and uh, he, uh, you know, he they they blind it with their flashlights, and they put a ring of fire around it with some gas, and uh, the monster suffocates and falls unconscious, and. Basically, the girl gets rescued, and they capture it. They capture it, and put it under, and it's 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 revitalized by rain, Mister Xander Kane. Ooh. It's revitalized by rain, which is really funny. fancy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But they still want to kill this this octo octopi. They still want to kill him. Poor guy. Man. Yeah, they're Octo shitty. They just go over there, scientists invade his space. Want to study him put him in a circus and 
Just leave him alone. <laughs> what? Yeah, just leave him alone. He just don't just let him be. Just let him be. Mm-hmm. Um, but they deserve to die. They all do, but you know they're all determined to kill the beast now, and uh, only for the girl she can. She she uh, she loves him. The octopus. Well, she knows how much the octopus loves her, and she uses that love to trap him and shoot him. And then everybody else shoots him. And then he <laughs> sinks to the lake. Aww. She uses she she she, but she did you she did utilize the 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 hopes of Mister Octo Man doing a live manga with her with his his tentacles. That's uh, how we roll. And it didn't happen. She he thought didn't fucking happen. So so there you have it. And um yeah. It's your typical creature feature. I enjoyed the fuck out of it, by the way. <laughs> I love Xander Kane knows what a sucker I am for creature features. You are a sucker. I am a sucker. And that's okay. Yes, you I are love, a sucker. <laughs> I certainly am. You have no clue. <laughs> um, but uh, I I love creature features. So for me, for the wheelhouse that it's in, I gave it a four out of five. I loved it. Loved it. I loved it. So, woohoo! What I about you? I give it a two because it gave Wompa. me a good laugh. In it for the lulls. Yes. Nice. I've I've never seen it, so I can say nothing of it. So this is all the ones I hadn't seen. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. You never saw this? No, I don't think so. I'd review it again with you, sir. <laughs> so, 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 so we could get something higher than a two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what's your number? What's What's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is a Chinese ghost story from 1987. Oh. Uh, so this is about a tax collector, like, basically gets kicked out of his his town or whatever and goes to another one to to try to get some work but he can't really find a place to stay so he kind of like is annoying everybody for some reason (laughs) and so like they wind up sending him to this haunted temple Um, (laughs) so he's got to spend the night in the haunted temple right but the haunted temple is filled with ghosts and basically it it turns into a love story which a lot of these like Chinese um, films typically do like there's these great like romance stories intertwined with like ghost and fantasy stories often this is just kind of in that same uh, wheelhouse so he falls in love with this girl but it takes him fucking forever to realize that she's a ghost um you got plenty of great like uh you know martial arts fighting going on in here this awesome music there's a, a great like the the big villain in the end just is has this like giant tongue that comes around and like wraps people up and like <laughs> does all Ooh. sorts of crazy shit. Just batshit crazy stuff. And it's so fucking fun and worth every fucking minute of it. I absolutely loved it. Four and a half out of five, a Chinese ghost story. Very well recommended. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's funny too. Like it's got, it's funny. It's got a little romance. It's got a little fantasy. It's got, you know, the goat. This is technically a ghost story. I use ghost kind of loosely because they don't look like ghosts they're just you know people at this temple so they don't really look like ghosts but it's well, just haunted by all the demons like? well they just look like they just look like there's no they don't have like a aura around them or anything like that they're glowing so yeah you don't really i guess i see why he didn't really pick up on them being ghosts because they could they could like touch them and all that stuff too it's not like they're floating through walls and shit. It should be a Chinese love story instead of a ghost story. But it's wonderful. Highly recommended. I can't wait to watch part two. Coming next week. We're in love with it. I absolutely loved it's it. Like, I'm a sucker for, for Well, I like these. So we watched was it, uh, Seven Golden Vampires. Yeah, like that was we did on the show, which was fucking fun as shit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I just love that. I love them throwing fucking everything in these movies they make my heart happy and I love them aww I wish I had a heart mm, me too you have one 
Just, you, just need some, you just need somebody to guide you to it. I don't need anybody. Yes, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Maybe I want, but never need. Yes. All right. So our number eight for the evening, uh, we're saving this one the best for last. Just like Vanessa Williams. Yeah. Sing it. Night. No <laughs> I want to hear your beautiful voice, Xander. Come on. Oh, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful. Can't wait. His his golden his golden voice with the nightingale sounds. With the uh, sweet and sat what is it? Sweet satin silky vocal cords. Satin Ooh, sultry yeah. tones. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, what what is to... the number eight? What what is it? You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Simon, King of the Witches. King of the Witches. <laughs> Simon. Cool as it sounds. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No. Ah, <laughs> it was like, I so sh- fucking long. I know. I don't want to shit on this one so bad, um, but I don't. But I do. I'm the Simon. Shitter. I'll shit all over. It. <laughs> Simon's a bum. The insomniac fucking... shitter. Simon is a bum. <laughs> he, he is. A, he is the a sewers. Fuck- in the sewers he's a goddamn bum and, and he and... but he's a magician i was like this guy's supposed to be a powerful magician and he lives in the sewer i was like what the fuck but then he just uses his power to harm people and put curses on people i was like no wonder this motherfucker lives in the sewer yeah that's what happens cool. when you use your magic just to fuck that... people over yeah, he's he makes his way into like a weird society of drug dealers and fucking pimps and fucking some weird boy. Co- yeah, that he's a pro- boy prostitute. I don't mm-hmm. know, pro- played by a twenty-five-year-old, but supposed to be like sixteen or fifteen or something. I don't know. And uh, like idolizes him, Simon. Um, and Put a curse uh, on him, Simon. Please do it for me. I got it. I got her hair. Um, yeah, he, yeah, I think he, he, he's some a guys, loser. he's a loser who gets fucking, who gets fucking screwed over by other losers because <laughs> he hangs out with losers. And that's, I just feel like this is a big homeless movie. And, <laughs> <laughs> and drug dealers. Yeah. Seriously, this is like what homeless people do to each other on the streets. Just fuck each other over and some guy pretends... I felt like at home, it was awful. Yeah, he just, this guy, he's like, oh, he's just, he just knows some magic spells and some fucking chants, so he's cool. I know, I felt like I was, like, hanging out with shitty people and I couldn't get away from them. Yeah, like, like, drug dealers and dirty cops and, like... I mean, this could be turned into a really funny movie. Like, I think, like, it would be, yeah, you could remake this into something really cool, like, on the streets of Albuquerque for real. Like, because there's a million, there's a million dudes like this on the streets of Albuquerque, like, who think they're fucking, like, satanic fucking. Like the broom fucker. Yeah, wizards who just, on all reality, at the end of the day, are just fucking drug addicts trying to get laid and fucking shack up with people. (laughs) (laughs) Who get past bad checks from fucking old gay dudes who just want to fuck 15 year olds that's pretty much what it is and, whoa. and uh whoa whoa, whoa. whoa. Um, yeah um well that's what was in this movie um uh, i'm just talking about the movie guys Come oh on. okay i thought you're talking about yeah. like no no this this really happened in the movie people. yeah <laughs> and he looks and... sleazy with his hairy chest and his shirt unbuttoned and, and then he was all like stupid scarf and he was <laughs> the all... scarf is clutch come on and he was like, "Oh, what is it called? Like uh, Fred from Scooby Doo?" An ascot. ascot. Yes. Yes. And then he was like, "Oh, I'm the cool guy of the party, even though I live in a fucking storm sewer." And what was Do the you other think one? We can get Aaron to wear an ascot for the next Android Vision. Yes. Well, <laughs> next next four episodes have been shot, but maybe after that I can do it. Absolutely. Re Only... reshoots. Only if Mona buys Call it. everybody I'll back it. for a reshoot. Only, only if Mona buys me the gayest one she could find, I'll wear it. Moni. Mona. And I will I will wear it for the February episode, which we're we're, we're gonna do some something special. But anyways What would be the gayest one? Like made out of leather? 
That's the sexiest one. That's the sexiest <laughs> one. You'll have to... I don't know. But anyways, back to Simon King of the Witches. Sorry. Yes. Derailed. Um, yeah, derailed. He... Uh, Got a little too excited. He's... He, yeah, he's just a fucking loser. But he does manifest some things that fucking kill people. He does manifest some weird ball and some glowing and some bar, some, like, metal bar thing. But, you know... Really, just to fuck over people. Yeah, he's just there to fuck and make fun of other people who are doing their own ritualistic stuff. You yeah, know what I mean? Like all the witches, the Wiccans. Yeah, he's like, also what a snobby shithead. Yeah, he's like a superior <laughs> snobby shit metal shithead. You know, here. like your metal's not as metal as metal mine. is my, right, my metal yeah. is better than your metal. My metal is more in a sewer. My metal is more evil than you, and I'm I'm more metal than you because I live in a storm drained sewer. Um. Yeah, he's just an uppity fucking prick, and he plays it off in this movie, and he gets what's coming to him at the end, uh, because you do bad things to people, bad things happen to you, and that type of fucking Shit catches up to you. Yeah, well, I, even if it, you know you you want to give sacrifice, you want to fuck people over in the fucking in the witchcraft world, well, you're gonna get fucked over just in turn. That's just the way it is. That's all he did. He didn't even do anything good for himself. Mm-hmm. Like he was just so concerned about how so much better he was than everyone and it was just like what the fuck i wanted to he, slap him he could have used his job <laughs> Violence. he could have used his job to get a he could have used his powers to get a job at mcdonald's and work his way up to shift manager and have you know What's a nice wrong black with of... mcdonald's at least those people have jobs Come nothing on. at all that's what i'm saying he could have gotten a job and worked his way up to shift manager at least had himself a nice black and white tv and could have bought himself a nice six pack of budweiser i like nightly. mcdonald's I do probably too. old milwaukee but yeah well, <laughs> yeah or the or yeah something but either way fuck this guy this movie was kind of boring unfuck this guy it's a weird it's just a fucking weird movie like that's yeah. what i remember but it's just it a weird really, oddball movie really long and really really it did fucking feel long. boring yeah. yeah i wanted to like just commit suicide so just be over two out of five <laughs> Ooh. Ugh, I can't even one. I never even want to hear about this movie yeah. again. I'd stick it two out of five. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I do remember just kind of being like... <laughs> I'm shading on it. <laughs> it's a movie. And that wasn't y'all's favorite one? We did save a doozy for the last one. Good job. We did, yeah. I would, yeah, I'd say my favorite one... Uh, well, p- do your do your last one, sir. Uh, yeah, my last one, uh, another 2022 release called Gatlop, Hell of a Game. Uh, it's about four friends that have been friends for a long time, but they kind of lose touch after about a decade. And one of them gets divorced and the other three decide to get back together and try to like cheer them up and kind of just go get shit faced at like a, at one of their buddies places and like all hang out for the first time in a long time. And obviously they're all in different places in their lives and, and whatnot. But the guy that's hosting the, the party gets this like credenza for free from some I don't know guy that's cheering and bartering shit all the time and so he throws in this credenza and it happens to have this board game in it and so they start drinking at his place or whatever and they're reluctant to play the board game and they start playing the board game and then like the shit starts like really happening and like they bring like like one of the things they do like if you could tell anybody to to go fuck themselves who would it be and the one guy's like oh that girl in high school I would tell her to go fuck herself and then the girl appears in the bathroom with a baby in her arms <laughs> and they're like what the fuck and they're like you gotta do it you gotta do it so he tells her to go fuck herself and she like disappears so whatever you're like the question you're asked however you answer you have to actually do it in real time uh, because this game is like haunted or whatever so it's kind of like a grown up version of like Jumanji or whatever um, but it starts off kind of a little funny. It doesn't really get, it's like very horror light. I think it doesn't really get, you know, nothing super crazy really happens in it. It's not really gory or anything. And it just kind of loses steam about halfway through it. It's like, okay, just kind of beating the dead horse over and over. What card can you draw? And make this one thing happen. Um, and it's just kind of gets kind of boring by the end of it. So it started off pretty cool and fun and then just kind of went wow wow it sounds Much like the like... one we watched last year with the computer game yeah yeah what was that one uh, I don't know was it 
Fuck. So I'm a sucker for movies like this. There's an Indonesian one called Ludo that I think is actually really good about some a couple two couples that break into a uh, a mall late night and they play this game and then like demons come out of it and it, that movie sucked cool. Um, this one's not. So watch Ludo, <laughs> not Gatlop. <laughs> both all, all, both have weird names. Uh, so yeah, two, two out of five from Gatlop, hell of a game. I was really looking forward to this one too when it came out, so I really wanted to see it, but it was a, more of a disappointment than my best friend's exorcism. So, <laughs> Wow. I'm trying to figure out which one we last watched last year. The, it was the computer game one. Was it Choose or Die? No, it was like something about a, with a party, right? I think it was um, Choose or Die. It's on my, it has to be on my letterbox. Yeah, check, choose, or die. Let's see. Was it... Was a f- let's see. Which one oh, was no, it? It wouldn't have been choose or die. Definitely wasn't that. No. What did oh, we watch? I'm, I'm stupid, because if we did it last year, it's going to be in the list. So I'll find it in two seconds. Yeah. Dark August. I have every What's film. Oh, no, that... no. Dark August. <laughs> I loved Dark August. I hated it. I loved it. The Christians, they tricked you. Mm-hmm. Outcast? No, oh. that's a werewolf movie. Not Apostle. The witches movie. God damn. In Fabric? No. Oh, that was the weird. Curse story. of the Queer Wolf, Woman, Noma, Mona's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are, are you talking about Bloodfest? No. That's the festival. Yeah. Thing. Haunted Halloween Party. Was it that one? Might have been Haunted Halloween Party. I, I, I think I that said, was it. I told you it was Party. Halloween you. Party. Yeah. It was so, just as simple as that. Halloween Party. Ha- yeah. Haunted Halloween Party. Was it, or was it Halloween Party? Yeah, Halloween, Halloween Party. Par- yeah, Halloween Party. Yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. A college student unwittingly releases terrifying entities from her school's past oh, via Halloween themed computer no. game. Yeah, hitting them, hitting the miss. Party something. That yeah. was my pick from last year. Nice, one. nice callback, um, Mona. Good job. Um, by the way, hey. uh, my favorite one from this batch was Octoman. Uh, mine from this batch, fucking Chinese ghost story, man. I would fucking do both. Oh, I can't wait to watch the second one next week. Gerald's game. I was yeah. intrigued immediately. You know what the you know what the started the, happening. So you know what the crazy thing uh, about Gerald's game is that when I look through my letterbox ratings, uh, all the nobody women liked seemed, it. No, no, the, the 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 women and females liked it more. Like the, I watch a YouTube channel called Spooky Astronauts uh, from a a lady named Emma, who lives in Australia and she does a bunch of YouTube videos and she's super, super cool and awesome. And, but she gave it a five out of five. It's like one of her favorite things. And she doesn't give anything a five out of five and she gave it a five out of five. And I was like, what? So I guess mm-hmm. there's some sort of like empowerment. Um, which yes. obviously we, well, we talked about, yeah, yeah. About battling through your trauma and all that stuff. So definitely it rings true to a lot of folks. So you're not yeah. alone in your five out of five for Jill's game. Mona, so yeah, I mean, it, I liked it. Gave it. Me some hope. Yeah. yeah. I got a Just friend a to battle. Speck. Don't get to... too excited. Trying to battle through <laughs> my fucking, way. trying to battle through my fucking moon man trauma myself. Uh, oh, that was you know so what gets creepy. You Making me some salsa would get you right through that. You know what, sir? You have some coming for Christmas. Thank goodness, because the last time you made it, your kids ate it. Fuckers. Yeah, um, I'll send you some. <laughs> they ate everything. I owe. and then Mona, <laughs> Mona yeah. is Mona's going to send you some tamales. I, I don't know how her. well that'll go, but <laughs> I I volunteered her. I could do it. You could do it. Just put it in some fucking dry ice and and put it in um, a styrofoam. Oh, she sh- yeah, you'll ship them. You're going to get tamales this year. I volunteered her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mona. How kind awesome. of you. Mm-hmm. You're so thoughtful. Yeah, I might even make you some red chili. Ooh. We'll see. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, we'll so do. next step. Ep- send it together. There you go. Like Fine. all the food in one. We should. We'll send each other in a sense. Send each other. You know what? We could send each other in a box too. I'll send you in a box. We'll send each other suitcases. 
I don't think he wants us sure. in a pod. Yeah. He just wants our food. I would love it if you guys came. Yes. Maybe uh, not unannounced out of the box okay. from UPS, but. <laughs> yeah, Here I am, all oh, sweaty. The top. I live in a very small space, but you're welcome. Yeah. Um, it's all right. I've slept in bathtubs before. Okay. <laughs> so next episode, uh, we're going to do number nine through 16. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, offline, we'll pick our first two uh, oh, yeah, films that, do we'll, that. Do, we'll do collectively. And, seven uh, more. Who needs sleep? Not and me. then seven more. We'll 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 get it done. Um, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to us. Uh, again, uh, you'll be able to find this on the Cemetery Gates podcast, and I'm probably going to upload this to as well as to the Intestinal Fortitude Podcast Network as a Halloween special. So um, there you have it, and uh, we will see you guys next week for the 31 days of Halloween challenge. Good night. Good night. Pleasant nightmares. You've been listening to the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Android Virus and Xandra Kane. Follow us on Twitter at Android Virus at Xander underscore Kane and at Cemetery Gates 66. 